Well, good morning everyone and trust that we uh, find you well. If you've got a Bible, either a paper version or electronic, um, I'd like to read this morning from the story of Luke, uh, a story Jesus told in Luke chapter 10, starting at 25. I hope you've got your uh, wee cuppa and um, um, you're ready just to give me tw about 25 minutes of your attention. I'd like us uh, to look at this story together as, as our lives begin to uh, pick up momentum as, as we and, and the rest of the world uh, move from a place of lockdown uh, and also in light of, of all the other things that are happening around us uh, even regarding um, lots of, of forms of discrimination. I've felt uh, for the last uh, while, for the last couple of weeks, that the Holy Spirit has uh, been holding this story in the back of my mind and as I lingered and thought about it, um, I can see a little bit more why and uh, so I just felt that it was right at this stage to um, share it together. I want to give you a little bit of background um, as Luke uh, and two other of the Gospel writers also record this story. But Luke, he records it with a little bit more detail and there's a reason for that and uh, we'll maybe see that later on in the story. So let's read together Luke chapter 10, um, starting at verse 29. And behold, a lawyer or an expert in the law stood up and putting him, meaning Jesus, to the test. He said, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, what is written in the law and how do you read it or how do you understand it? The man answered and said, love your, the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your strength and your mind and love your neighbour as yourself. And Jesus said to him, you have answered correctly, do this and you will live. But the man desiring to justify himself or find, another translation says, find loop, loopholes, um, asked Jesus another question. Uh, I pushed in a little bit further. He said, who is my neighbour? And then Jesus replies with this story. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jer Jericho and he fell among the robbers. Uh, who stripped him, beat him and uh, departed, leaving him for dead or leaving him as if he was dead was another translation. Now by chance a priest was going down that same road and when he saw the man he passed by on the other side. Uh, likewise um, a Levite when he came to the place he saw and he passed by on the other side also. Verse 33 starts with this word, but. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where this man was. And when he saw him, he had compassion on him. Um, he went to him and he bound his wounds, putting oil and, uh, and wine. And then he set him on his animal uh, and brought him to the inn to take care of him. And the next day, um, he, he got up and he took... Uh, to Denario and give it to the innkeeper saying take care of him and whatever more you spend I will repay you when I come back. Jesus then said to the man uh, which of these three do you uh, do you think proved to be a neighbour to the man who fell among the robbers? He said the one who showed him great mercy. And Jesus said, yes, you go and do likewise. An expert in the law uh, comes to Jesus, a person who has studied much of his life. A lawyer is another translation. Uh, he's devout, devoted himself uh, to study. He's read lots of books, probably lots of commentaries, and he is recognised as a man of great intelligence and uh, he comes with this question to Jesus what will I do to inherit, inherit uh, uh, eternal life 
What do I need to do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus replies uh, to him in verse 26 and says to him, you have studied the law, you have studied scripture. What do you think? What is written in there? How do you interpret it or how do you read it? And this expert uh, lawyer, he um, responds to Jesus by uh, quoting two passages from the Old uh, Testament uh, where God speaks to Moses. And if he is a devout, if this man is a devout Jew, which he probably, he more than likely is, um, he would have understood um, the Torah and, and these books are within the Torah. And so he, can, he, he quotes from uh, Deuteronomy chapter 6 where it says, Love uh, God with, with your whole heart. Love him with all that's within you and love him with all that you've got. And then he says, he quotes from Leviticus chapter 19 uh, verse 18 where again um, Moses is, is um, relaying what God has told him and he's saying, Do not seek revenge or carry a grudge out against any of your people, but love your neighbour as yourself and then um, Jesus commends him and says you have answered well now go do this and you will live but we read that this person is not satisfied with that answer for some reason and instead of going away and being quiet he pushes back with another question in the light to uh, justify himself we read in one translation or to find a loophole in um in 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 what these uh, what is already written within the law um, and so he pushes back with this question who is my neighbor um and it i, I can't help but think about this man and Maybe he's been brought up in some sort of environment that, um, that, that teaches him one way and then he reads scripture and he sees that his actions don't match up to um, what the book actually says. And so he's trying to find a shortcut or a loophole or justify how he's living. I also can't help but think about the uh, people or the crowds around Jesus. And this man also, they're all expecting Jesus to answer this question from the Jewish perspective. Um, as I said, maybe this man has been mentored in a particular environment or culture. Um, uh, and um, as he reads and he studies God's word he sees that it supersedes culture race and gender and he sees uh, and and senses that there might be a different way that he he needs to live if he's to know the comfort of eternal life Luke is um is documenting these details very closely and I want to push into that in a minute but how Jesus answers um, and, and we'll go into the story how Jesus answers this man um, blows the mind probably of um, his disciples of the the religious people who are around him it probably uh, um, blows the mind of of this lawyer uh, but at the same time it brings huge comfort to those people who are classed as outsiders when Jesus answers this question and how he answers this question. Isn't it funny over our time of COVID a lot of us have got have been able to take the time to get to know and to have glimpses into the lives of our neighbours. Well I have found that within our neighbourhood anyway. And what that does, especially uh, to those of us who are quite judgmental, um, it helps us to look at those neighbours uh, of ours in a different light. 
And what happens and what I found has happened is as we take time to listen and to know and to hear the stories of some of our neighbours, it causes us to look at them in a different light. They say you should never judge a person until you walk a mile in their shoes or a day in their shoes. Well, Jesus goes on to tell this story uh, to explain what it is to live um, to live with an eternal perspective. We read in verse 30, there is a man, we're not told what his name is, and he um, has found himself in some form of fallen. He has fallen into hard times. He has um, been robbed. And we read he's been stripped, robbed, beaten and left for dead. And we don't know how long he was lying there on the road. But we do, Jesus uh, lets us know that three people came along that day. Maybe others came along but Jesus is just going to tell us about three. And uh, as I, as we enter into this story, I want to, you to ask yourself this question. Which of these people resembles me the most? We read in verse 31, a priest came along the way. And um, when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Let me tell you what I know about the priest. He was a man of great honour uh, in his society. He was the one who, in, who interceded on behalf of the people. Um, he, he, um, he has many uh, laws that he has to keep and many rituals that he has to perform. And, um, and, and so he is kind of bound by external rules. He would have great concern about how he is perceived in, in, in society in that day within his, his um, grouping of people, within the temple and within all the feasts that uh, were represented within that day. His position and how he stood within the community was hugely important. And I can only assume because of that, of all these external values, the conversation that goes on in this important man's head is, if I stop and help this man, this will not alone affect how I'm viewed, but also my ability uh, to operate in such a high-powered position. You see, if this man happen to be dead because we, we we're told in the story from one transition he was left as if for dead and the priest went over and touched him he would be classed as uh, unclean and he would not be allowed to go about his duties that day uh, the next person that jesus mentions is a levite and uh, and so uh, we read that he uh, also passes by um, on the other side. Now what we know of Levi's is they worked extremely hard for the church. They had uh, many duties that they and many responsibilities that they were to take care of in, in, in advance. And uh, they were probably the people who stressed uh, over a lot of little things. They were also the people who were assigned in leading and singing the psalms during temple worship. They were the people who probably were at the temple early and they were the people who probably left the temple last. Um, to me, they were the people who loved to be needed by the crowds. They had a self-righteous busyness and we read that he passed by on the other side and maybe the conversation went like this uh, I have important tasks to do for many people and stopping for this one person could cost me a lot of valuable time not alone cost me a lot of valuable time it will interrupt my schedule 
of all the things that I have to do. And not alone that, it might even cost me my life. And, uh, and so we find that he is concerned. This person seems as if they live with a lot of concerns of things that they think really matter. And finally, we come to the third person that Jesus mentions who walks that road that day. And he becomes the hero in the story. And I think we all like to think that we are like this person. But the more and more I study this person, the more and more I see that I have a long way to go. The first thing that we see in this story is this man is a Samaritan. He's an outsider. He's somebody who isn't very highly valued in life. He's not a Jew and he's not even a Greek. And he comes from a city and as Paul is writing this, he is very particular that he has placed this story in chapter 10 after chapter 9. Because in chapter 9 we read that Jesus and his disciples are going through Samaria and they are rejected by the people there. And, um, and, and the disciples are so cross with this that they say to Jesus, they go to Jesus and say, will we call down fire upon these people and wipe them out? And Jesus obviously uh, says in that story, no. You see, Luke, as he's documenting this story, is an outsider himself. You see, Luke is not a Jew. The other gospel writers are all Jews, but Luke is not. And so he's celebrating some of the facts uh, and some of the, the, the positions that Jesus takes as he has told this story. The Samaritan, like the rest, notices. And he takes time and he stops and pays attention. He sees um, what appears to be a dead body on the road. And this isn't a man who is in uh, so full of self-importance and so much in a hurry that he hasn't time to stop. I, uh, recently I have read a book or I'm reading a book and it says people who are in a hurry are always people who have either insecurities or they live hiding something. I leave that with you. But in verse 33, or verse 33, we read that he saw him and he had compassion on him. He saw him. Um, this Samaritan saw with different eyes. Everyone else saw just a dead body. But this Samaritan, as he saw, he saw there was a glimmer of life, a glimmer of hope within this life. And that's the first thing that Jesus wants to, to teach us in the midst of this. People of the kingdom see life where there is, where, where everyone else sees Death. Actually, at the, ver at the start of verse 34, we read he went over to him. But I think there's a, a wee bit that I would like to interject here because I imagine that this man of compassion, um, when he goes to him, he probably bends down and listens closely to hear if this man is breathing. And as a result of that, he, he probably puts his arm around this man and helps him up. Helps this wounded man to sit up. And then he probably takes hold of his, of his, of his water bottle and he gives him a drink. And then he probably asks him his name and how on earth or what on earth has happened to him. Verse 34 paints a beautiful picture of uh, Jesus uh, in, in our lives and, um, um, and how Jesus comes, uh, has compassion on us. He, he comes to us, he binds up our wounds uh, and he, he picks us up and he brings us 
to a place of safety. And we see that this is what this man does. He takes care of him, he picks him up, he puts him on his animal and takes uh, care of him. And he does all this at the risk of his of losing his own life. You see, those robbers could have easily came back at any time and left that man for dead also. We read that he, he, he stays the night uh, with this man in this inn where he's been taken care of. And then the next morning, he goes to the innkeeper and he takes out two denaria or two silver coins, which I'm not sure whether it was a lot of money in that time. I can only assume it was. But he seems to give the innkeeper all he has to take care of this man. I love that it's not just words and it's just not just compassion within his heart but all of this causes this man to act and to do something but he goes on even further he goes on to the point where he says if it costs any more if this man needs anything extra i will return and pay the price as I said, Jesus probably blows the minds of the listeners because what he does is he takes an outsider, a person on the margins, an outcast, and brings them in to the middle of this story and makes them a hero. This is an insane thing to do it, and it is a maddening thing to do for those religious uh, Jewish people. But Jesus here is not alone um, just, just um, wanting to do that and showing that, that there is value in every life. He wants to show us within this story how, how the ones who understand eternal life uh, are to live. I loved what Neil shared last week with us about the Ethiopian eunuch and, and the value on the one. And you will read that many times throughout scripture. We will read many times of how Jesus' day was interrupted because of the one. How he, he um, broke his schedule, schedule how he, he allowed himself to be interrupted, how he showed compassion for the one and Neil shared that about the Ethiopian eunuch how uh, God instructed Philip uh, to go from the place of revival out into the desert for the sake of one and share the scriptures in one as I said to you earlier how do you see yourself within the story you know um, uh, and 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 uh, when we're looking at this story, we have a tendency to uh, judge ourselves uh, among the three people, the priest, the Levite, or the Samaritan. I want to widen that a little bit, and I want to ask you to see where your life is in conjunction with five people within this story. And I want to start at, the, at, the, at, the, at where I thought I actually was going to finish but do you see yourself uh, like the person who um, has fallen into hard times on this story? You're, you've been stripped, beaten, broken um, and, and left for dead uh, on the side of the road. And, and you feel within your life that no one sees you. You have fallen into these difficult times and no one sees you because no one, and because no one sees you, uh, no one knows your even knows your name, and because they don't know your name, they don't even know your story. You feel nobody cares. Everyone walks past, even the religious people and the people of the temple. Everyone walks past and there's two things that i want to say in light of that if that's how you feel today and from a church perspective i want to say sorry if we have walked past you because i know that's not by studying this story that's not 
the heart of Jesus. And it's not the heart of the hero in this story, the Samaritan. And the second thing I want to say in light of that is, is, is a prayer. Is that God would give us courage as people who, who claim and profess to love God with all our heart, soul, strength and mind. And love our neighbours as ourselves. That God would give us courage. Give us empathy. Give us compassion. And give us boldness to step out. Uh, give us that that freedom of hand where we we um, are not afraid to spend as much as it takes to see uh, small uh, see people with just small glimmers of hope within their lives and and I'm so thankful that within our church we we do see so many people who do that who 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 give give a lot who can see um, that potential. Does your life represent this young scholar or this learned man or this um, this um, lawyer? You've read all the books. You, you understand. You've read it from cover to cover. You know it uh, off by heart. But you still take this posture. How little can I get away with? How little can I get away with being involved, giving of my time, treasure, and talent how can i find a loophole that it won't cost me as much maybe you're like the priest and you have a very respectable role within society and you're bound by that you're bound by external laws and traditions you're afraid of what people might think you're afraid that if you if you take a risk you could lose everything and you could this might not work out and you could fall flat on your face. Maybe you're like the Levite and you're busy. You have lots of important jobs to do. Many people, many good things to sort out. Um, and, and you could not stand the, day, the thought of your day being interrupted. It would just cost too much it would just be too devastating for you and then we we all, we come to the samaritan and we see the true heart of this man revealed in his actions he goes he has compassion he he stops he listens he takes care he picks him up. He takes him to a place of safety. He covers all the costs and goes beyond that and says, if more is needed, I will give more. He risks his own life. He gives all he has that day. My prayer is that as we journey out of lockdown, as our lives become, um, have more and more momentum, as our society changes around us also, that we would be less judgmental towards people who are different from us in one form or fashion. As our lives take up speed, that we would carry the heart of the Samaritan, that we would have compassion that we would have time within our schedules and within our own self-importance. That we would have time to demonstrate and show the love of God. I want to end with a verse from Acts chapter 10. Because I think this is a beautiful verse. And it sums up a lot of what we're about or what we're going through today. Peter um, has this bias against uh, all other peoples other than his own people, the Jewish people. And, and God knows for the, for the gospel to move and multiply and go to the ends of the earth, he needs to break the barriers in Peter's mind. And so he performs a vision as Peter is praying on a rooftop. 
He has to perform that vision three times for Peter to understand what he's saying. And Peter comes out of that time with this realisation that it is not for him to judge who the gospel, who the love of God is for. And he makes this confession. And Luke is probably the one who has documented what Peter has said because Luke is the one who also wrote the book of Acts. Peter says, now I know for certain God does not show favoritism with people but treats everyone on the same basis. It makes no difference what race of people one belongs to. If they show deep reverence for God and are committed to doing what's right, they are acceptable to him. May God help us to be people who value every life around us. Help us, Lord, to be good neighbours to all. Thank you.